It is a um, pleasure to be with these law enforcement officers, officers who are elected by their constituents, who know their areas, their jurisdictions, who deal with people every day, who understand crime, who understand immigration, whose officers confront those issues on a daily basis, and their voice has not been heard. We've had 20 some odd meetings in the White House this summer, it's reported with stakeholders, uh, primarily business and special interest groups. Not once have the Sheriff's Association been invited. Not once uh, have uh, federal law officers been invited to lay out in detail the problems that are being created by uh, the uh, unenforcement enforcement policy of, of this president. So let me recognize uh, the National Sheriff's Association for their support on this issue. Sheriff Tom Hodgson, uh, uh, who's the central leader in organizing this, and I believe he's testifying, Marshall, before the House now, um, and um, uh, participating colleagues, all of you. I have to mention Sheriff Todd Endrickin. Where's Todd? Uh, from Alabama, supposed to be here. So let me just make a few remarks, and we'll move forward with the program. Three weeks ago, the president issued an executive order nullifying, really, in effect, nullifying the federal immigration laws of the United States. President Obama's executive amnesty will give uh, amnesty to five million illegal immigrants, provide them work permits, photo identification documents, social security numbers, access to social security and Medicare, taking jobs and benefits directly from struggling American lawful immigrants and uh, native born. With his order, President Obama violated the laws Congress has passed in order to execute and carry out laws Congress has refused to pass. This executive order was crafted behind closed doors with powerful special interest. Excluded from those meetings were law enforcement officers, many of whom stand behind me today. These sheriffs are here to tell you how the president's illegal amnesty devastates communities and undermines law enforcement. A government must serve its own citizens. That's who our duty is to our citizens and lawful residents. We have cities and towns across this country that are struggling with crime and poverty, unemployment and low wages. Our people are hurting. But with this executive order, the president has abandoned those communities, has made it harder for the unemployed, has made it harder for people with low wages to get an increase in wages. There is no doubt about that. So we must serve the American people. We must serve the laws of America. We must serve the Constitution. Like the sheriffs with us today, we in Congress took a solemn oath too. So I have a message today for every leader in Congress, to every official in the White House, and to the President Obama. We are going to fight this illegal amnesty, and we're not going to stop. We're going to carry out the mission the voters sent us here to do. We're not going to give in. We're not going to yield. We're, not going to, we're going to stand strong for the people of the United States of America. I appreciate the opportunity to be with these fine law officers. And let's see who I'll first recognize. Uh, yeah, Marsha, we appreciate you coming on for the clarity of your message, the principal stand you've been taking. And Congressman Marsha Blackburn from Tennessee. Thank you so much, Senator. And I want to say thank you to all of the law enforcement officers that are here. You may wonder why they would take time away to come here and help us fight this issue. The reason is really simple. When we can't secure our borders, something interesting happens in our country. Every state becomes a border state, and every town becomes a border town. And because of that, and having that impact into their communities, they are here with us uh, today. So I am grateful to them. I'm grateful also that we have the senators who are providing the leadership that is on so needed on this issue. And Senator Sessions is exactly right. This is something we are going to continue to fight. The president talks about wanting to do the right thing. Well, the right thing to do is to follow the rule of law. You never go wrong when you're following the rule of law 
and you're abiding by the Constitution. That's the right thing to do. Second, uh, the President talks a lot about fairness. Let me tell you what is not fair. It is not fair for out-of-work Tennesseans to have to compete for jobs with those that have chosen to illegally come into this country. I'll tell you something else that's not fair. Some of my constituents and individuals that live in my state that have been legally immigrating with their families many times for years, spending their money, working hard to get that citizenship, it is not fair for a thousand new federal workers to be brought in to process for them, those that have Ill illegally entered paperwork, and putting them ahead of those that have been working to come to this country legally. That is not fair. I learned a lot this summer when I visited the border and when I went to one of the UAC facilities at Fort Sill. The stories you hear that of what has happened to these children is horrific. It is nothing short of horrific. And that is one of the reasons we continue to fight against this. It's the reason that I, along with Senator Cruz, authored the legislation, H.R. 5272, in the House, passed it with bipartisan support in the House on August 1st. And we continue to push for that legislation to pass the Senate, freeze that DACA program, end the ability to grant those work permits. It's the right thing to do. Another thing we're going to do as we go forward is to focus on the Office of Refugee Resettlement. We've been in kind of uh, in Tennessee, we'd say I've been in behind them for quite a while now. And uh, we have, we're seeking answers and clarification. And yesterday, I received a notice that the ORR director had resigned. We know that the child abuse issues that are transpiring there in that department are being swept under the rug. And we're going to, with the Senate's help, get in behind that issue and see what we can do to clean that up. I, th again, thank the senators. I thank the sheriffs for joining us. And I'm going to excuse myself and go back and cast my vote over in the House. Thank you all. Thank you, Senator. Thank you. Yeah. David, I'm, what, Rick, Marcia, thank you for your leadership in, on this issue and, you, and what you bring to the whole debate. David Vitter is one of our top senators, a uh, uh, brilliant legal mind, and a person who's understood this issue for a number of years and been an outstanding uh, spokesman uh, for a responsible course. David, thank you for your friendship and your leadership. Thanks, Jeff, very much for your leadership. And Marsha, great to be with you. Thanks for your leadership. Great to be with all these law enforcement leaders, including Sheriff Lonnie Greco from Plaquemines Parish, Louisiana. Sheriff, thanks for your work and your leadership. I stand firm here to say as well, we must stop and roll back this illegal executive order. It's exactly the wrong policy because it is rewarding illegal crossings, and when you reward something, you're going to get more of it, not less of it. It's exactly the wrong policy that is going to make this problem much worse, number one. And number two, it's flat out unconstitutional. It is the president clearly going beyond his authority because he is not acting just to fill in the blanks of law, to execute law. He's acting directly contrary to statutory law. And that is clearly beyond his authority. Uh, I'm very honored, as I said, to be with all of these law enforcement leaders. They're on the front line. They see the consequences of this every day, including Lonnie Greco. And Marsha was right. This makes every state a border state, every community a border community. Louisiana is a good example. We are not, of course, literally a border state to the Mexican border. However, in this latest influx of illegal minors in the last year. Louisiana is actually one of the top 10 states affected in terms of these cases of illegal minors being relocated around the country. We're one of the top 10 states. That means the Louisiana taxpayer is feeling that in all sorts of ways. 
huge new burden on the public education system, huge additional burden to our health care system, et cetera. And so Lonnie knows that and is on the front line of that. I'm a citizen there and see that all the time. So count me in to push back and fight against this in any way possible, including something I announced on the Senate floor today. I'm going to vote against the confirmation of the new Attorney General nominee because that is a prime position in the President's Cabinet that would help him further this unconstitutional action. The Attorney General is directly related to this issue and to the unconstitutional uh, action the President is taking. Uh, I'm going to vote no on that nomination and do everything I can to try to block that confirmation because of it. Thanks. All right. Thank you, David. And uh, we've got uh, several chairs that uh, I would like to recognize. Uh, first Chair Paul Babo. Uh, 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 he's the president of the Arizona Sheriff's Association and been knowledgeable of these issues for years. Sheriff Chuck Jenkins from Frederick County, Maryland. Sheriff Andrew Louderback, uh, Jackson County, Texas. And Sheriff Sam Page of uh, Rockingham, North Carolina. So if they will come forward and um, share their thoughts with us at this time. And thank you again, gentlemen, for your work to preserve uh, the rule of law in America and for your comments and willingness to come forward today. Sheriff Paul Babu of Pinell County, Arizona. And I wanted to, to share a little bit of the impact and what we're facing while this discussion is going on, what's really going on on the ground. And Pinell County is sandwiched uh, geographically in between Metro Phoenix and Metro Tucson, larger geographically than the size of Connecticut. And we have 400,000 plus residents. Two years ago, the Border Patrol said there was 123,000 illegals apprehended right there just in one year. 123,000. That does not include those who got away. Uh, two years ago, we had the largest drug bust in the history of our state, one of the largest narco busts in the country at the time, in Pinell County, led by our sheriff's office, two to three billion dollars. And this isn't just marijuana. It's black tar heroin, methamphetamine, and cocaine that doesn't stay in Arizona. It goes all across the country, and it affects all Americans. And more recently, uh, two months ago, we announced that we had arrested seven cartel scouts. You may ask, what is a scout? They're not the ones delivering the drugs or actually bringing the illegals. They're the ones that are on mountaintops, actually with binoculars. They have not only cell phones, they have encrypted radios. They're resupplied with food and water for 30 days at a time, and they have solar panels to recharge all their communication devices. Over a 50-mile swath of area of my county, we've arrested seven of these individuals who are giving intelligence to the drug cartels that the coast is clear, there's no cops in the area, or hold up for a moment. And they would get paid $100 each time a successful drug load came through. I served as an army officer for 20 years and served our country in Iraq. And a story like this uh, sounds more like a war-torn Iraq or Afghanistan than an interior county of our country. And it should beg the question to every American is how has this job fallen to the local sheriff to fight the cartels, to enforce all of the laws when it comes to our job and our duty? And that's the situation that we're in. Uh, Senator Sessions uh, referred to uh, the five million people that, that the illegals that President Obama announced, and yet the very same day the President gave his speech on the 20th, uh, Secretary Jay Johnson of Homeland Security issued this six-page directive, orders to all those agencies beneath his control, essentially granting not the five years President Obama referred to, saying if you've been here five years or longer, you, we will defer action and there, nothing will take place. We'll issue work permits and all these other rights in our country. He refers to January of 2014. Any, if you were here prior to that, no action will be taken. So what the president said was an absolute lie. At the same time, his Secretary of Homeland Security put out the six-page memorandum. And then he, he, he specifically spoke to prosecutorial discretion. 
essentially 20 million illegals who are here in this country. If you think they're going anywhere, think again. There is no action. So for you and I as American citizens, when it comes to law enforcement, the law applies to you and I, yet when it comes to immigration, there is no law because there are no consequences. And it's something that, that we in law enforcement have to deal with, have to fight, and we want this Congress to stand up with Senator Sessions and Senator Vitter and other leaders in the House and Senate and as a lawmaking body and stand up and stop the president from this executive amnesty that he's taken. We want the focus to be, instead of putting illegals first and their rights, what about putting Americans and our rights and our security once first? Put our security first. And that should be driving this debate that nobody should disagree with. It's not just the illegals I talked about. It's not just the drug cartels that we're fighting. What about ISIS? What about terrorists? That if, if 123,000 illegals can sneak through through my county and the uh, cartel network, 76 we arrested in one day carrying 108 weapons, two of which were Fast and Furious guns, that it stands to reason that terrorists or people with terrorist intention with deliberate plans, military training, and financial resources, it stands to reason that they can also make it through this unsecured border. We ask Congress to stand up to this president and to enforce all of the laws and to secure our border. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you, Senators. It's a privilege to be here today. My name is Sheriff Charles A. Chuck Jenkins, Sheriff of Frederick County, Maryland, just an hour from Washington, D.C. And you'd ask, what am I doing here? I'm here because my citizens, my constituents are angry about this executive order. I'm here with these other sheriffs to encourage all of our Senate leaders, our congressional leaders, to fight back by whatever means possible, any way possible, uh, for what I think is really an, an illegal order that flies in the face of, uh, of, of lawlessness. Um, you know, we, we are, you ask, why am I here? Because what we see in Frederick County, Maryland are the same problems that the border county sheriffs see. We see human trafficking. We see an insurgence of heroin. We see transnational criminal gang members coming into our communities, committing crimes, harming our citizens, and breaking the law by every means possible. What's going to happen by this amnesty, we, we have a program in place. ICE has a program in place that, that allows locals to help enforce the laws. What this is going to do, by all intents and purposes, is to empty our jails in all of our communities and put these criminals back on the streets of America, and they're going to harm our families, our children, our grandchildren. You know, the citizens of Frederick are very, very upset about this. I get calls from all over the country. I had the opportunity this past summer to visit uh, McAllen, Texas, with five other sheriffs. What I saw down there is frightening. There's no way that you can convince any sheriff standing here today or any senator that what's going on in America on our borders is right, it's good for America, it's an injustice to all Americans. And like Senator Blackburn said a few minutes ago, every county eventually will become a border county. So let's do what we can do as constituents, encourage our senators, our congressional leaders to fight back against the president, to basically uh, uh, push back and refute this illegal order. Gentlemen, thank you for being here with me today. Texas sheriffs, I represent the Sheriff Association of Texas here, and we're, what we're facing uh, in Texas and in this nation is a large welcome sign and a saloon door mentality on our border. Sheriffs in this country support the rule of law, period. We support the rule of law. Everybody here behind me, to my left and to my right, supports the rule of law. The cartel violence, every community is affected by the cartel violence in this country. Let me just give you just um, a quick recap of something that happened Sunday at 9 p.m. in Reynosa, Mexico. That's in the state of Tamaulipas. If you search it, you won't find much about it because information is censored by the Mexican government and the cartel. And there's not much media representation down in Mexico on the border that's reporting the violence. But if you care to, to check, you'll find that there was a four-hour protracted gun battle 
That's just on the other side of McAllen, Texas. They border each other. A four-hour gun battle with over 50 dead. That's not an accurate number because the cartel picked most of their dead up without an accurate count being made. So we have hand grenades, over two dozen hand grenades used, and automatic weapons, and over 50 dead with four civilians killed. So faced with these kind of problems on the border, the southwestern border of our country, we have to stand up for the rule of law. We cannot allow this to keep going. Many cartel families all live in Texas and come back and forth. It's spreading. Every community is affected by this. Every community is affected by the narcotics, the prostitution. The cartel is very good at marketing human smuggling. They market it from South America on up. And these people pay for the use of the road that currently right now is under the control of the Zetas. That's US 35, all the way from Mexico City, all the way almost to Canada. We do not support this amnesty. We cannot support this amnesty. The sheriffs in this country stand united and unified against this type of illegal situation that's going on. We would ask for everyone to unite behind us as we give everything we can to try and get this country back the way it should be. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Sam Page, Sheriff of Rockingham County, North Carolina. And uh, Mr. Sessions, Mr. Sessions, I have a list of about 30 sheriffs from North Carolina couldn't be here that, that stand in support of and appreciate everything that you do and everybody that's here doing what they're doing. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here today as sheriffs because we care about America. We care about our citizens. I've served on the National Sheriff's Association Border Security and Immigration Committee for about three years. I've had opportunities to go to the border. Some of the stuff you've already heard, we've, we've done, we've communicated, but we care. I'm concerned about human trafficking in my community, drug trafficking, illegal immigrations, weapons, criminal offenders coming in. I'm also concerned about people that are unemployed, underemployed, and homeless in our communities that are getting placed as second in this country, and they should be a first consideration. I'm concerned about the American citizen being placed second in this country instead of being the first consideration. We're here because of border security. It's very important. We're also here because of President Obama, this recent executive action as it applies to amnesty. The National Sheriff's Association position on comprehensive immigration reform was issued June of 2013. Our platform specifically opposes amnesty for persons living in our country illegally. I want to be clear on that. We oppose amnesty. The National Sheriff's Association also, as you've been advised, supports us being here today in our efforts. The effect of President Obama's executive actions. We're going to lose secure communities. A year ago, Secretary Napolitano, the DHS, said secure communities was a good program. Now it's not a good program. I don't understand that. It helps us to identify criminal offenders that have been arrested, that have come to our jails, and it helps us identify those persons who work with the ICE to deport them from our country. Federal detainers, which gives us authority to hold persons under the circumstances, are going away now. So basically, we're going to have a catch and release, and criminal offenders will be released back into our communities across the country. Prosecutorial discretion expansion is basically allowing more people not to be deported that commit criminal offenses in our community. DACA and DAPA, which is basically the, uh, the deferred action for, uh, for parents and also for children. What we see from this is with the amnesty effect of five million, I think we're gonna see a surge, just like we saw this summer down in Texas where we went to to observe, and you're gonna see more people coming into the United States because the message that our government, our leadership is pumping out to Central America and Mexico is this. If you come to America and you do not commit any criminal offenses, you can stay, you won't be deported. That's the message that's going out to Central America and Mexico, from our understanding. Congress has an opportunity today. There's some discussions right now in the House. Defund this amnesty. Defund this executive action by the President. 
and redirect those funds. If you want to put them in a good working place, redirect those to border security to make sure we secure our borders first in America. That should be our first concern, north, south, east, and west, and all ports of entry. Our leadership needs to listen, as you've heard, listen to the American people and make us, the U.S. citizens, the first priority in this country, secure our borders and protect the American citizens. If we fail to secure our borders, we will become a sanctuary country. And if we fail to secure our borders, we will become a border sheriff, all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. This is a great group of um, law officers. And I want to point out again, for the last several years, at least two or more, I have been raising the question of why, when you try to craft a system of immigration for America, they haven't been brought in to ask what really is happening out there, what we can do to make law enforcement more effective, more fair, and more just, uh, and serve the national interest. The challenge for America, what the American people have been pleading with for, and, and actually I think now demanding, is a lawful system of immigration that serves the national interest, serves their interest, and uh, is one that we can be proud of. That's doable. It's within our grasp. But for some reason, uh, Congress and the executive branches have never followed through to fulfill that obligation that's fundamental to America. We have just a time for uh, a few brief questions, and, and the sheriffs may want to Okay. Yes, I think we've got to do that. And we've got to uh, make sure that the, the Senate considers it. We take testimony and do the right thing and proceed in a way that makes sense and rational and good. But I, I absolutely believe we can, and uh, I believe there will be progress made. It needs to be considerable, however. We can't just do some token bills. We have to do something that really changes the dynamic we're on. I haven't con considered what we'll do about that, and we'll look forward to seeing um, what the bill says. You know, law officers, um, that's a good question. The president indicated, or the word was, that he would issue an executive order, which would be written, could be examined. American people would know precisely what it meant. If they didn't like it, they could complain. If they liked it, they would be happy. What he did is allowed the Secretary of Homeland Security, basically, I guess he whispered in his ear, and he's going to issue these policies, the gist of, the gist of which is to uh, see that the laws are not enforced in a massive fashion that Professor Turley says goes beyond uh, any rational justification for the executive branch, as have other constitutional scholars. So what do you think you can do about that? Well, uh, I'm looking at it, but I don't know what that would be at this point. Well, the polling numbers are, are changing. People, all of us know and have great friends and neighbors and family members that have been immigrants or their parents have been immigrants. And so we as a nation are very sensitive uh, in, about that. And we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but we want to do the right thing. And I believe the polling numbers show that uh, more and more as people learn the enormity of what's happening, uh, the more the data changes. One poll in Louisiana in this last Senate race showed that the number one issue was the president's executive amnesty was at 44 percent. And I think Obamacare was at 38. Uh, 
So I think the American people are beginning to make their voice heard. And I think young people uh, will be looking at this also. And, and they have an interest, and we need to be careful about how many uh, um, people, even college graduates, are having a hard time finding jobs today. Mary? The sheriffs are not empowered to apprehend and deport people. That is exclusively a federal situation. But when they apprehend someone for a crime, uh, traditionally, for the time immemorial, they hold that individual. They, uh, the federals put a detainer on them, and when they finish serving their time, they're deported. Uh, then you stop rewarding this illegal activity in a lot of ways, and I think it'll begin to bring the country under control. Um, I got one, one, all right. Yeah. This lady, I would think, was for. Well, I, I'm going to look at it hard, but I'm, I wish we'd taken, it appears that the language in the House could have been stronger, and I would like to have had it stronger on this particular issue. Uh, and we'll evaluate that and see. It'll have some, uh, um, we have the potential uh, to move into next year, uh, I think, with a commitment to do something. So uh, we need to move into the Senate majority, Republican majority next year with a commitment to actually accomplish something as a question indicated earlier. Gentlemen, anything else that you'd like to share? If not, I want to thank you for taking the time out of your day to come here. And I want to say one more thing. This is doable. It's the right thing. What the American people have asked of their government is the right thing, a lawful system that treats everybody who would like to come to America fairly and equally that uh, lets them apply and compete for a limited number of slots and create a lawful system that we can be proud of, but one that serves the national interest, the interest of the average working American whose wages are down, whose job prospects are down, whose hours each week that they work are down because uh, we don't have enough jobs, frankly. And we need to be real about that and create a system that serves our national interests. And I thank you all for standing up and sharing your thoughts. Take care.